Greetings, YouTube. Adobe Lightroom has practically become an industry standard as far as raw editing software goes with its powerful collection of tools and easy to use workflow. Darktable, a free Lightroom alternative, is potentially even more powerful but with a very steep learning curve. In this video, I stack Darktable head to head against Adobe Lightroom to see if Darktable can produce even more exceptional results. Grab some coffee, stick around, and see what happens. I don't know about you, but personally, in the past, I found Darktable very difficult to use to produce very desirable results in comparison to the workflow of Lightroom. <laughs> and it turns out that much of this was not the fault of Darktable, but user error on my part and not understanding the working philosophy behind Darktable. Darktable has a very different workflow than Lightroom, and it has an array of very complex but very powerful tools which literally can let you adjust any parameter within your photo that you can possibly think of which is honestly very daunting at first and difficult to grasp. All right, so in this video, I'm not gonna try to exactly replicate my work in Lightroom, but I'm gonna use Darktable to potentially even produce better results and also present a workflow for Darktable as well. All right, so before I get into the actual image edit, I wanna show you guys something really important in Darktable. So if I go to the settings option here, go to the processing tab, my default workflow is set to scene referred sigmoid. Now, sigmoid is one of two modules within Darktable that map the tonal range of the image to the tonal range of the display. And sigmoid is the newer, more modern version. And I like sigmoid because I think it tends to produce more effective results in an easier fashion with less work than the alternative called Filmic RGB. But Filmic RGB is also great because it's really good at recovering blown out highlights and providing a smoother, more filmic look to the image. And it's actually potentially a more powerful module, but more complicated to use and harder to get good results. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna use Sigmoid. And before I enhance this image, I wanna show you the original image I created in Lightroom. So here it is, and all I did to it was apply the camera standard profile and add some sharpening. Besides that, I didn't touch it at all. It came out of the camera looking great. All right, so as I alluded to in the intro, Darktable has a very different working philosophy than Lightroom. Darktable gives you a very neutral starting point and a whole bunch of tools to create your own artistic image. And as a result of that, you're gonna get a much more flat looking image to start with. But when I enhance it, we can create our own look, which I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So before I enhance the contrast and color, there are a few settings we can apply. The first is denoise. So what this does is it's actually gonna use the uh, noise profile from my Nikon Z50 uh, for their given ISO that it was taken at, which in this case was ISO 200. And it's going to apply a very subtle noise uh, reduction. In this case, 200 is not very much noise, but I always like to leave it on by default. Um, and the second is I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit. Because looking at the, uh, the histogram at the top, I can see that I could expand the dynamic range a little bit higher here. I wanna get the midtones in an ideal place. So maybe about right here. All right, so now that we set the base image where I wanted that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some color. So I'm gonna go into the uh, color balance RGB tab here. And I'm gonna start by adding some uh, perceptual saturation to the shadows, a little bit to the midtones, and actually maybe pull out the uh, highlights back just a little bit because I think that creates a very natural look. Add just a bit of vibrance in chroma as well. I think this might actually be just a bit much. I'm gonna pull the saturation back just a little bit. All right, that looks good. All right, so the next thing we can do in the workflow is we can add some local contrast and there's two ways to do that. There's the default option here, which is just click on the local contrast and it tends to look great by default. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this a different way. So if I go ahead and type in diffuse or sharpen, there's a diffuse or sharpen module and within the diffuse or sharpen module, there are a bunch of different presets and there is one for local contrast. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the default setting for that because I tend to think that this produces even better results and particularly because it just adds a little bit more of um, some color contrast as well and it looks really nice. 
So by default, uh, since diffuser sharpen is typically used for sharpening, uh, Darktable doesn't put this in the most ideal location for local contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Shift. I'm going to drag this after the sigmoid module because that's the most ideal place to put a local contrast module. So after adding the local contrast, I actually think that we went a little bit overboard now on color because of the additional contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and pull back these sliders just a little bit and get this looking really nice to my taste. All right, so let's go add some sharpening now. Now, I could use the standard sharpen module, and it's decent and it produces okay results, but what I'm actually gonna do instead is make another instance of diffuser sharpen and use the uh, sharpening setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new instance, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this to right before color balance RGB, which is where it would put the standard sharpening module. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the lens deblur hard setting. Now what lens deblur does is it essentially tries to deblur the image in the opposite way that uh, a lens or dust or any other optical defect would uh, blur the image, sharpening the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this here and um, I'm gonna check out its default setting which is usually fantastic. I'm gonna zoom in to 100%. And we can see here that this provides, you know, a pretty nice amount of sharpness to this flower here. Yeah, I, I don't think that's too much. I think that's just the right amount. All right, so just to check in and compare it to the uh, version of Lightroom, the one in Lightroom has maybe a bit more color saturation, might be a bit softer overall. I'm gonna go ahead and make one more tonal adjustment to this image. So I'm gonna use uh, color zones here and this lets me make targeted adjustments to specific colors. So I'm gonna to go to the Hue tab and select this dropper, and I wanna put it on this uh, slight pinkish color here. It's gonna go ahead and find the location of that particular hue. So I'm gonna take this and drag it over to that color and then just change the tonal properties just ever so slightly, slightly north. And that's gonna shift those colors to a slightly more uh, classic red. So another way we could do this is we could use the uh, RGB primaries module as well. And that gives us color uh, control over uh, red, green, and blue. And we can adjust the uh, hue or purity of those colors. But I tend to like uh, color zones because I can select very specific hues and adjust them, which is what I did here. All right, so to get this image looking really great, I'm just gonna apply a couple more final adjustments. The first is I'm gonna go ahead and increase the exposure just a little bit more to make it just a little bit brighter. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add just a bit more saturation back. Then we can go ahead and apply a watermark and a frame. I'm gonna use my uh, standard presets here. There we go, and it looks really nice. All right, so using this basic workflow, it did require some more work than that of Lightroom, but I was able to really create my own look in this image and design it myself with the color and everything, and comparing it to the result of Lightroom, you know, I think the Lightroom has a bit more pink overall, and it's a bit softer in contrast, um, whereas the dark table image has a bit more of that classic r uh, red, which I designed in, I think it has maybe a bit more contrast, but it's also very smooth. And, you know, I kind of like the image I created here in Darktable, but I'll let it be up to you to decide what you think. All right, so I don't want to go through another entire image edit again, but I'd love to show you guys some more unique and powerful features within Darktable. And the first is Filmic RGB. So like Sigmoid, Filmic RGB is a module that takes the tonal range of the image and maps it to the tonal range of the display using a curve. And uh, it also has some really unique and powerful features that allow us to reconstruct blown out highlights. And this image I took in Iceland is an absolutely fantastic image to test this on because we have some really blown out highland highlights from the sun and we have those sun rays coming through the mist. Great photograph. All right, before I mess around with the settings of Filmic RGB, let's go take a look at the uh, Lightroom version. And so here's the Lightroom version. As you can see by default, it looks very similar to the Darktable version, but the, the main difference here is there's a lot more uh, definition around the structure of the sun. 
And I'm going to go ahead and try to recover the highlights. And as you can see, you know, it does add a nice level of smoothness to the highlights. And I like the way that looks. All right, so let's go look at what we can do with Filmic RGB and Darktable. So the main tab that we want to look at in Filmic RGB is this Reconstruct tab. And if we enable Highlight Reconstruction, it allows us to, it enables features that allow us to fix blend out highlights. And if we click on this circle icon here, it shows what it's defining as blown out highlights. And we can change the threshold to increase or decrease that. But you know, I tend to think that the default settings usually work fantastically. And what we can do is mess around with these settings to adjust the appearance of the blown out highlights. You know, if we go ahead and remove colorful details and add gray, it's gonna remove that color and make the brightness of the sun look brighter because perceptually less color and more like white brightness looks brighter to the eye. What we can also do is go to the look tab and we can change this highlight saturation mix. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the left and to the right as well just to show the difference. And uh, I kind of like it all the way to the left because it makes that sun look really bright uh, and it also looks very smooth. All right, so remember how earlier I mentioned that the new sigmoid module is really effective at producing really good results with a lot less finagling, even though it has a lot less uh, knobs to adjust? Well, let's go look at a version that uses sigmoid. All right, so as you can see here, the sigmoid version with default settings of sigmoid, like no adjustments, looks fantastic. There's a lot of smoothness to the highlights, and well, to me, I think it looks really natural. And we can go back and compare it real quick to the Lightroom version. Yeah, it just, they both look really good. It's just a slightly different interpretation of the same image. Well, that'd be up to you to decide which ones you guys like better. All right, so I wanna show you guys another really cool thing with Diffuse and Sharpen. So sometimes in photo editing, you know, we might want to intentionally add some negative clarity or some negative haze because we wanna add more of an ethereal fog or mist to the photograph. So going over to the Lightroom version real quick, so in Lightroom, we know we have two sliders that can do that. We have dehaze and clarity, and we can add negative clarity, and that, in this case, makes it look kind of blurry, and we can add a little bit of uh, dehaze, and it looks all right. But we only have two sliders in Lightroom that allow us to control this. And in Darktable, we can actually do that with Diffuse and Sharpen, and we have a whole lot of control to that haze, that mist, with uh, the settings we have here. And so I'm not gonna go into all the technical details of Diffuse and Sharpen right now. You can always look up videos on Diffuse and Sharpen, but just real quick, what Diffuse and Sharpen lets us do is either sharpen or diffuse various different structures within the photograph, and first order speed affects the larger structures, and fourth order speed affects smaller structures. So if you go ahead and add some diffusion to the uh, first order speed affecting larger structures and really increase the size of this radius span, we can get this nice, ethereal fog to the photograph, and I think it adds this nice sense of mysteriousness looking through the forest. All right, so as we can see from doing this comparison, when one really understands the intricacies of Darktable, one can generate some really exceptional results with it. One of Darktable's biggest strengths and weaknesses is not being able to utilize things like camera profiles. And once you understand that Darktable gives you a very neutral starting point, and you better understand how you utilize the tools within Darktable itself, you can really design and create your own unique look, which could be potentially better than starting from a camera profile or trying to replicate a particular look. Robust tools like Filmic RGB, Local Contrast, RGB Color Balance, and Diffuser Sharpen are powerful tools for an essential workflow to create your own unique look. Hey, so I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section below what you noticed after seeing this comparison. Would you be more likely to use Darktable after seeing this video? Did I miss anything? Also, let me know what your own personal experience is with Darktable, Lightroom, or any other raw editor of your choice. So we hope you found this video intriguing and informative. If you did, leave a like. It really helps out my channel. Also, if you'd like to check out more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, if you'd like to check out some of my photographic work, see the description below. Hope to see you in another video.